Well, praise the Lord. Today we've got a very interesting show. I want to introduce to you uh, Rita Weber from South Dakota. She has a very uh, unique uh, ministry and many unique talents that I think you'll find interesting uh, and that we want to share with you today. But the first thing I'm going to ask you today, Rita, is tell us about your family. If you could give us a brief synopsis of, of your family. My husband, Carl, and I have been married for 46 years this month. And we have three grown children who are all married. We have nine grandchildren, including twin girls that we just celebrated their third birthday yesterday. And what a great, it was just so good to be with those little ones. That's awesome. Um, one of the things I want to share with you is that Rita is a, an accomplished minister in, in not just one area, but many areas. Um, but I want to ask you, Rita, what sequence of events led you to the ministry that you have now? When I was a little kid, I grew up in a family of nine. And seven of us, we uh, children, were all taught by my father to play music or sing music. And we used to travel around as a family and sing. Mm -hmm. So all of my life, my father taught us that God has a call for everyone to do some kind of ministry. And that was always part of my thoughts. But I never was really clear about what God had intended for me to do. So I did several different careers. And when I was too old to go to seminary, God actually had me go to seminary and I have a Master of Divinity degree. And I became a minister uh, of the gospel in an official capacity. But I would have to say that all my life, he has put me in places and done ministry through music and through speaking and through counseling that was all ministry. And now that I'm in my golden years, ministry has become golden. I just love being full-time working for the Lord. That's all wonderful. Um, but was there, uh, Rita, a special uh, something, an event that happened uh, I believe it was in your 20s um, that you contracted a, a, an eye disorder that really affected your life. And I want you to talk a little bit about that. What, what did that do to your life? What did that do to the thought of a future ministry? When Carl and I had been married for two weeks, I turned 21. And I had to go in for a routine eye test because I failed the driver's eye test at my examination. And when I went in, I was working uh, in Rochester, Minnesota, and a Mayo Clinic doctor who was doing the exam started doing all kinds of tests and diagnosed me with retinitis pigmentosa. He told me, you're going to lose your vision. It'll gradually deteriorate from the outside inward, and you'll lose all of your light-dark perception, and you'll lose your color perception. There's no treatment. There's no cure. I can't tell you how long it'll take, but you need to start preparing now because you will be blind. I'm sorry. And I just stumbled out of there thinking, I can't be blind. I just got married two weeks ago. I've got a husband. He doesn't know that he's signed on to be here with a blind woman. And that impacted me so deeply. I'm a problem solver, I'm a fixer. So I did everything I could. I went back to school. I was working as a, a nurse at the time, but I went back to school intending to become a teacher and gradually realized that my vision was deteriorating much more quickly than I could have ever imagined. And in three years from the time I was diagnosed, I had to quit driving. I had to uh, completely revamp my vocational plans. And I used to just sit in my laundry room, running the washer and dryer and crying because I was just devastated by blindness. I came to a point where I just knew I just couldn't do it anymore. But I couldn't go to God because even though I had given my heart to him when I was a little girl, I had 
wandered away. I had gone off on my own. I had figured out that I had my own plan that I wanted to fulfill. And so one day I just realized there was no other place. There was no hope. I said, God, you're going to have to help me. I just can't be blind. And that day, God let me see myself. For the very first time, he let me see how he saw me. And he showed me that he had made me with a plan to fulfill in my life. And that I was so busy chasing after what I thought was the plan that I had missed it. And now I just knelt down in my family room and I prayed and I asked God to forgive me to help me to forget about my own ideas about what my life should look like and to surrender to his plan and his will and it started right there that day God gave me a brand new starting place and I have been walking with him ever since and it has been amazing the amazing uh, the amazing point that I think in your life is the fact that if, if you know Rita, you know that she is a, a, a lady that accomplishes things. She likes to accomplish things. And she has accomplished many great things. And I wanted to set the fundamental basics of her life, the launching pad of, of, of actually her, her blindness, to let us understand how much we can accomplish even though we have adversities in our life. And so Rita, I want you to tell me about, you know, the other, uh, you know, you've, co you've accomplished so much in your life, yet you've had so much uh, adversity, and certainly God has empowered you to be able to do greater things. I mean, we have people out there in TV land that, that have full faculties, and yet they believe they can't do something for God. Mm -hmm. And so that's why this is such an interesting show today, because if you're discouraged, be encouraged by the life of Rita Weber and what God has done in her life. So Rita, just tell us about uh, kind of wrap up and tell us a few of the, the accomplishments you've had and how actually having that adversity mm -hmm. actually became a positive in your mm -hmm. life. Tell us about that. When I was peeling wallpaper off of my bathroom wall one day, I thought back over my life and I was saying, oh God, you've just been so good to me. When I couldn't see to be a nurse anymore, you let me become a medical social worker. When I couldn't see to do the paperwork that was necessary for that, you let me become a mental health counselor. You've just been so good to me. Whenever plan A didn't work, you always had plan B. And right then, right in that bathroom, God spoke to me. Now it wasn't an audible voice, but he said, no, Rita, you're wrong. Your blindness was a surprise to you, but not to me. There's no plan B. You're still on plan A. And that just made my heart burst to think that God is right there with me all the time. He let me do all those careers, and I loved every one of them. But then he had more for me to do. When I was 49 and blind, he called me to go to a seminary and to have a, a degree that I never had ever imagined. He let me serve him in a whole different way. And he offered me an opportunity to learn how to speak because I wanted to speak better. I signed up for Toastmasters. <laughs> I ended up going to the semifinalists of Toastmasters International in the World Championship of Public Speaking. Right. And it was so terrifying, so terrifying. But God never intended me to be a great speaker on the world stage. He intended me to be a speaker to mm -hmm. people everywhere, in small places, little places, places where people needed to be reminded that he loves them so much and that he created every single person with a plan and with everything a person needs to do it. And you might think you don't have what it takes to do some particular thing, but you know, what's in you, what God put in you 
if you have him in your heart, if you start with that, he will fulfill his plan in you and it'll be bigger than anything you can imagine. There's a passage in the Bible, eye has never seen, ear has never heard, it has never even entered the imagination of a person what God has prepared for those who love him. And that verse, when it came to me, it was like, wow, Lord, you are just so amazing. And he's the amazing God who you serve too. Whatever his plan for you is, just get close to God and he'll fulfill it in you. That's, that's a, a, a wonderful... That's words of wisdom, words of experience that you have went through, Rita. I imagine uh, going through all that you went through that you developed a trust in God. And tell us about, uh, Rita named her ministry Blind Trust. Uh, tell us how you come up with that and really how you really learned to trust God through all of this. Because a lot of people have trouble trusting anyone, mm -hmm. even God. So tell us about that. You know, trusting God is a lot different when you truly depend on others just for things that people normally do all by themselves. I had to learn to trust my husband to guide me when we were going across a busy street and I could hear cars coming and he'd say, no, come on, come on, come on. And that was so hard, so hard. And when I was being called to seminary, I thought, Lord, this isn't right. I must be hearing you wrong. I, I just can't do this. And during that time, I was on my knees before the Lord all the time, praying and looking in the Word and seeing where He was leading me. And in the middle of my day, not in the middle of my day, in the beginning of my day, when I was getting ready for a day ahead, I was in the middle of getting ready. And all of a sudden, a song started coming into my head. And it was my life verse. It's one that's probably a life verse for a lot of people, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. And it's trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And that song came to me and I thought, oh, I must have heard it on the radio. And I went and found it on the piano and I plunked it out and, and some verses came and I kept listening for it. But it never came, it was, it was God. And I knew it was God that told me to just trust, just trust. And he would direct my path. And so I did that. And when it was time for me to establish the ministry, somebody said, well, what are you going to name it? And it came just, just that quick. <laughs> it's Blind Trust Incorporated. That's, that's it. Blind Trust. And, and God has led me every bit of the way when I think about what I'm about to do sometimes, I just get in my spirit, I, I start to feel a little inadequate. And a verse of that song is, when it seems that I'm inadequate to rise up to the task, I know God's grace will suffice for what I lack. For it's when I'm at my weakest that the Lord is at his best. He will help me. All I have to do is ask. And that prayer, that word comes to me often. And I just, anytime I'm feeling insecure, anytime I'm feeling doubt in my spirit about whether I can do something, I just say, Lord, I can't, but you can. Just have your way in my life. Use my mouth, use my hands, use my feet, use my heart to bring your love and your care and your truth to someone who needs it, and he does. Now, Rita, there are people out there that, um, that deal with discouragement. They deal with, well, how can God use me? How can, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I'm just, I just go to church. I, I don't really, I'm not a leader. I'm not, you know, I'm just very insignificant. The people that just can't seem to believe that that God would use them mm -hmm. for all types of different things. Mm -hmm. What words of encouragement do you have to say to them? 
because you certainly have the experience behind it to be able, I think, to instruct others mm -hmm. on, on how to get busy doing the work of God mm -hmm. um, and stay at it and, and you'll find what you, you'll find mm -hmm. that calling. Mm -hmm. I really think that sometimes we, we think that a ministry has to look a certain way. If I could be like that person over there, if I could do what that person does over there, then I would be used by God. But the reality is that each one of us is so uniquely designed, so uniquely designed. It's kind of like the, the tools in your drawer. You know, if you look at all the spoons, there's different shaped sizes and, and unique characteristics to each one of your spoons because each one is for a different thing. And that's how it is for people too. God's made us a special way. And it's only what God has intended us to do that is the ministry that he prepares us to do. And I'm convinced that if you have Jesus in your heart, you can't help but do ministry. That just by being who God intended you to be, not trying to copy someone, not trying to follow someone else's style, you become a fulfillment of God's plan for your life. And it's often those places where we didn't even know we were having an impact, where we have the greatest power to follow God's will. I think when we get to heaven one day, we will say, oh, yeah, I do remember talking to that person after church. I was just chatting with them. But there's something about the connection that made an impact on that person that changed their life and you didn't even know it. Those are the awesome God moments in life that we are not going to know on this earth. Just be faithful in your prayer. Be faithful in your reading. And be faithful to get those little nudges the Holy Spirit will give you. And do what he says to do right when he says to do it, without question. And you will be fulfilling God's calling on your life. I think, Rita, sometimes that people, they, they don't pick up, you brought about the little nudges, and that's a great mm -hmm. point, because a lot of people say, well, I can't discern the voice of God. Mm -hmm. But I believe that God talks to us all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just that a lot of folks may think, well, that might be my thought, mm -hmm. you know. Um, tell us about some of those early nudges in your life, you know, that impressions, uh, mm -hmm. uh, a voice, or that you knew uh, that God wanted you to do certain things. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of people that serve Christ, they can't pick up on that mm -hmm. or believe that, that, wow, God is really talking to me. Mm -hmm. So tell us. Mm -hmm. Well, in my own particular life, those nudges come often. And because I'm not a person who can just walk out my door and get in the car and drive somewhere to do something, a lot of my nudges are about, call this person. And I pick up the phone and I call the person and invariably the person says, oh, what perfect timing. I needed to talk to you so bad. I was just thinking how much I needed to talk to someone right now. And, you know, it's such a simple thing. A phone call seems so trivial, but that's one of the kinds of nudges. Or, or sending an email. Or when you see somebody uh, in the grocery store and they're just standing there alone, sometimes the Holy Spirit will just say, you know, just say hello to them. You never can tell what kind of impression your life will have because you carry the very Christ Jesus inside of you. And so if you make a connection then the Lord himself has made a connection. Isn't that a wonderful thought? I think sometimes we just think it has to be a big thing. But we have a God who paid attention to the little things. Amen. Amen. It's that still small voice of God mm -hmm. that, that God speaks to us through. Mm -hmm. Well, Rita, uh, tell the, the TV audience about uh, the fact that you are an author. Uh, she's a songwriter, and that God gives you songs, and, and kind of how that evolved, and, mm -hmm. and how did you come to the understanding and realize that you had that talent, that ability mm -hmm. to write songs and, and to sing them or to mm -hmm. play musical instruments or mm -hmm. any of that? 
Well, from the first song, Trust in the Lord, which I received when I was getting ready that day, songs just kept coming. And they were all original songs, and sometimes they would just be there all complete. Sometimes I would get the words, and I would just sit down at the piano, and I would figure out where the melody was, just listening to those words. And it would be like my hands just moved across the keys, and I received a melody, and it stayed in my head. And that's the difference, because these songs, they wouldn't leave my head. They'd play over and over. And I finally had the courage to tell one of my professors at seminary that I had written a couple of songs. And he said, Rita, at chapel, you're going to sing one of your songs. And I was so terrified. Oh, I was so terrified. And I sang it, and I played it not knowing if God had given those songs to me just to encourage me or if they were for public consumption. But after I played it in chapel that day, people said, oh, that was such a moving song. That was really blessed by God. And so I recorded the first album of 20 songs. My brother and sister came and helped me, and we recorded 20 songs in three days. So that was quite an amazing thing. And we've sold all of those CDs out. But I have a couple of more CDs. I, I wrote about 40 songs that I've recorded. And uh, those songs, I have an opportunity to sing them when I speak um, for the Stonecroft Ministries. And I just have such amazing feedback about how they touch people's hearts. And so I, I just have come to realize that those are meant to be given to people to encourage them like they encourage me. As far as the writing, the first time I sat down to write a book, the Lord said, you should write this book. And I sat down, inspired by the songs he had given, and I wrote down a book of little life lessons that the Lord had given me throughout my lifetime. The well, next book was one that worked in my thoughts and in my heart for 10 years. Fuel for the Fire, I had the idea that I was supposed to write a book about building a fire and about how the work that God does in our hearts is similar to the steps it takes to build a good fire. And so I wrote that book all about the principles about giving of ourselves. For example, when you build a fire, you have to be careful that you aren't going to have it rise too high in the sky and, and catch fire in the branches. But you also have to know how big you're willing to let your fire grow. And if you need to trim some branches out of your life so you can let that fire be all it's intended to be, praise God, trim some branches. It's worth it all. God will build that fire to the greatest height that you're willing to give your life to him. That's a good point about our, about our submission to God. And submission takes you great places like Daniel the prophet. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel was extremely obedient. The Bible says he had an excellent spirit. And uh, it took him to great places, uh, political places that he should have never been. Mm -hmm. But I want to share with you, this is Rita's uh, CD called Love Notes from My Father. And you can order it on the screen. Uh, all the information you need to order it is, is, will be below the screen there. So please uh, uh, pick up a copy of this, you know, uh, send for it and we will we'll make sure you get it. I think you'll really be blessed by it. And then also Rita has a book here. Here's her book called Fuel for the Fire that she talked about. And I think that we can learn a lot from Rita's life. I'm learning a lot just sitting here in this interview, just being very, very honest with you. I, uh, she's ministered to me already here in the show. She doesn't even know it. <laughs> but she has, and praise it's about, God. about callings. Yes, praise God is right. So please, at the bottom of the screen, just, just pick up, just order one of her books because you will be blessed by both of these, I am sure. This is a, a very unique perspective that Rita has, um, a dependency upon God that most of us don't ever have to be tried to live, to live through, um, but she has rose and shown through it all and I imagine, Rita, looking back on your life, you can just see the hand of God mm -hmm. just directing you from the time you were 
four or five years old until now. Do you want to just uh, uh, speak a little bit about that? We've just got just a couple more minutes here, mm -hmm. but if you would just briefly speak about it. Um, and then at the very end, I, I want you to pray for our audience okay. here. So, Well, the Lord spoke to me when I was five years old in Sunday school class, and Mrs. Johnson gave me a picture of a white heart. It was beautiful with designs all around it and gave me a black crayon and said, every time that you have an argument with your brothers or sisters or take a toy or something, make a little black heart a mark on your heart for each time. And I did that. And I soon saw that the heart looked terrible. And I said, oh, I want it to be clean and white. And she said, but you can't, can you? I said, no, I can't. She said, you see, that's what sin is in our hearts. And we can't make ourselves clean. Mm -hmm. But Jesus can. And if you give your heart to Jesus, he'll give you a brand new clean heart. So that Sunday after church, I felt very strongly to go up at age five and pray before Jesus and ask him to forgive me and to come into my heart. That's the beginning step for everything you want to do for the Lord. And from that Amen. time on, when missionaries would come, when there was work that was going on in church, I always felt the call of Jesus on my life. Here I am, Lord, I would say. And then I wouldn't see anything that I was supposed to do. I always wanted a neon sign. I always wanted something that was very clear and very direct about what I was to do, but it never came. But now as I look back, he's the one who sent me to nursing school. He's the one who had me be a social worker. He's the one who taught me about counseling so that when I sat in an office and I had no clue what to say to that person, suddenly the words would come and they would be moved into the place where they needed to heal. The Lord is like that. He just continually will guide you. As long as he's in you, he'll be with you. That's right. That's and right. That's just an awesome thing. Well, we thought. have just a little bit of time here, Rita. I want to thank you mm -hmm. for coming on the Connect Show today. But I want you to just do a just a real short prayer here for us, if you could. I will. Thank for the you. audience. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for your love for us. We know that you love each one of us more than we could ever know and that you created us exactly as you meant us to be. Even with the parts that we think are negatives in our lives, those places in our lives you can take and use for glory for you and we give our lives to you now we surrender to your plan and your will and for each one here i pray lord that you will just give them the confidence to trust wherever you take them knowing that one day they will hear well done good and faithful servant amen in jesus name amen, amen.